Hello everybody, uh, in this video I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about frame buffers and their memory layout and how to use them. Um, so a frame buffer is typically just a linear array of bytes that represent uh, pixel colors that would be presented in some two-dimensional grid of pixels uh, in the image or part of a window on the screen. Um, I want to talk about like the mapping between the one-dimensional um, uh, buffer to the to the two D grid of the pixels. So say we have this frame buffer that has twenty pixels in it, twenty elements. Um, each element could have like an RGB color. Um, it, it doesn't matter for this. Um, for this level of analysis. So basically it, we have 20 pixels um, and we can, uh, 20 pixel total that we can represent in this buffer. And we can lay those out in various ways on a two dimensional grid. So let's say we have a three by three uh, grid of pixels in a two dimensional sense. So typically we just start from the beginning and we go left to right and then go down left to right again, down to the left again and right. So we get one, two, three, then four, five, six, then seven, eight, nine. Um, let's say we want to represent those in these colors. And we need to write the code that um, fills the one dimensional array of pixels that is in our frame buffer. Uh, now we can pre-allocate the frame buffer by the way to be much larger than what is actually needed. That's actually recommended because if you your application is going to be displayed in a window it's going to be resizable you don't want a resize operation to do a reallocate or free a buffer and recreate a new buffer and stuff like that. We can reuse the same uh, buffer that you pre-allocate at the beginning of, of the lifetime of the application. So, anyway, so we have this 2D grid. Um, we want the first row of pixels to be green, the second row to be blue, the third row to be purple. So we know we have three uh, rows because we have the height that says three and so we can treat that as like three elements that we loop in a in a for loop in 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 our programming it doesn't matter which programming language um, and then within each um, iteration of the loop we make another nested loop that iterates over the the pixels within each uh, row and that depends on the width in this case both of them are the same number but it doesn't have to be as we'll see. Um, so we in the first iteration we know that we want our first row to be green so we just put three green pixels. In the second iteration we want um, uh, the th next three pixels to be blue so we make them blue and notice that um, we just assume we're just running on a one dimension linear buffer and we're assuming that the way it's going to be laid out in a two-dimensional grid is as a three by three um, matrix basically a three by three grid and that's an assumption that may or may not be true and we the, the way this would work is that whatever assumption the code that writes the pixel values is making as long as that assumption is the same assumption that whatever's reading those in and displaying those as a two-dimensional pixels as those as as long as those assumptions are in sync then this will work um, okay so we'll we look in our internal loop and see okay well once we're in the second um, row right because uh, in the second iteration of the outer loop um, then we know that the next three pixels are going to be the second row so we can say okay now it are going to be blue um, and then the third for uh, the third row now let's say the user starts stretching the the window okay so 
now our width is 4 and if I go back you can see that in this case before we are uh, pixel number 4 was the first pixel of the second row and pixel number 7 was the first pixel of the third row now pixel number 4 is, has been repurposed to be the last pixel of the first row and pixel 7 is the second to last pixel in the second row right and pixel 8 used to be uh, in the middle of the last row now it's the end of the second row etc right so um, we still have the same linear memory the same one dimensional array of bytes but the interpretation of what it means um, for each index uh, for each element in the array uh, the mapping between that to the to the grid has changed so we need to be aware of that so uh, whenever the screen gets resized the um, uh, frame buffer mapping definition somewhere that holds you know what the width and the height should be should be stored somewhere with the frame buffer such that the code that uh, loops over it and fills pixels need to need to know that the the mapping has changed All right uh, so now it needs to in the outer loop we still have a height of three so we still looping three times in the inner loop uh, we're now supposed to be looping four times um, and then we can say okay the first three if we were to still do the same exact drawing it will look like this then like this and then like this but then like obviously what we actually want is to f um, the two degree to follow the same pattern in most cases so what we actually want to do is this um, but like if something went wrong you might actually end up seeing this um, all right and then uh, the user has stretched this time um, vertically so the width hasn't changed but there's the height has changed and now there's an extra row you notice all the pixels and all the mapping that currently exists still remains exactly the same. Uh, the only thing we need to know is that we need to do another round of the loop in the outer loop and put other color in the next um, row of pixels. Um, and then it stretch the user stretches it again and now again we have this issue of all the numbers are wrong right um, five used to be um, first pixel of second row now it's the last pixel of the first row etc as you can see uh, so again anytime the any of the dimensions change we need to uh, have the frame buffers uh, idea of how it's going to be presented and updated accordingly and if it does, then we get this, and everything's fine. Um, yeah, that's it. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, and you can subscribe if you want to be notified for other videos like that. Thank you.